Well, howdy folks, it's Matthew, your friendly neighborhood technician here, making a video for you out of Boise, Idaho. We're looking at a 2005 Nissan Sentra with a 2.5 liter engine in it. It's the Spec V Type R, which doesn't mean anything special. All it means is that it's got a variable valve timing engine in it. It gets better gas mileage and has just a little bit more get up and go. So this vehicle came to me with all kinds of issues. It wasn't running correctly, it was running rough. Sometimes it would have a really rough start, stuff like that. And apparently it had been in a few different shops and nobody really could, could figure it out or get to the bottom of it. So when it came to me, the first thing I thought I would do was check compression in it. And sure enough, as soon as I checked compression, I found out that the compression was off in all cylinders. It had fairly low compression, but the cylinders weren't dead yet. So I decided to go ahead and check the valve clearance on it to see if the valves were opening and closing. Now, the way you check valve clearance is by using a feeler gauge and you find the proper specification for valve clearance, which on the intake side for this vehicle is 14,007 inch, which means with the camshaft installed, you should be able to fit that 14,007 inch feeler gauge underneath there. And Unfortunately, I could not fit the proper feeler gauge underneath there. So what does that mean? That means that the valves were open just slightly. So I decided to pull the cylinder head, check the valves, and sure enough, the valves are all gunked up with carbon. They were open. Now, the human eye is not gonna be able to see the valves open. It's literally that fine. So what I did was I introduced just a little bit of water on to, to sit on top of the valves, and within a matter of minutes, I had seepage coming uh, water seeping through the valves, which again confirmed that the valves were open. So I had the cylinder head sent out and uh, had it rebuilt and had all new valves installed with valve springs, all that other good stuff. And now it's time to put this cylinder head back together. So what we wanna do is we wanna take the right bucket lifters, <clears throat> excuse me, we wanna take the right bucket lifters and have them installed here. Now your bucket lifters, they're gonna have their measurements, 720, that's 7.20 millimeters. That measurement, that number, represents the distance from the top of the bucket lifter to the inside of the bucket lifter. It doesn't represent the depth of the bucket lifter or the diameter, it represents the distance from the top of the bucket lifter here to the inside there, okay? So, a few tools that you want to do this with are gonna be a micrometer. If you can go down to the dealer or what, what have you and get a chart printed out of the different sizes, like here you got 6.96, 6.98, 7.00. That's gonna help you also. But the main goal is to make sure that you can fit this feeler gauge that's 14 thousandths of an inch inside of there. Whenever you're putting the cylinder head back together, you always wanna make sure that you have engine assembly lube. And you wanna go in here and you wanna make sure that you lube the race where your, where your camshaft sits, and you wanna lube the top and sides of your bucket lifter for two reasons. In order to do this, you're gonna to have to turn this camshaft over and over and over again, and you don't want it to be turning dry on any of these bucket lifters because that will destroy or foul up the cam lobes. Also, when you start this engine, it's going to take a little bit of time for the oil pressure to build up and bring oil up here. So that lube being in there is going to make sure that you don't have a dry start. So let's go ahead and get started with this. So I've already installed my bucket lifters. And what I've done is I've made a, a, a diagram here of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bucket lifters. And I've made a, uh, a note here of the size of each bucket lifter inside of there, okay? So now let's go ahead and get our camshaft installed. And again, when you're installing a camshaft, you wanna make sure that you take just a little bit of lube here, get it on your finger, you don't want any hairs or anything on there, and you just wanna put that right there. Hold on, I got a kiddo calling me. What's up, kiddo? Go play, baby. Okay, baby, I'll, I'll get to you in a minute. I'll be there in just a minute. So you want to make sure that you get 
All these areas lubed up. Don't need a whole lot, just enough in there. And then you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna lay your camshaft down in there. Now when you lay your camshaft in there, it's gonna be offset because of your cam lobes and the valves being open and closed. So go ahead and install your cam caps. And again, I've got these lubed up, but just to give you an example, just get a little bit on the end of your finger, rub it in there, and you'll be good to go. So go ahead and set your cam caps and make sure you have them. See, that's an oil port right there, and there's an oil port there. So make sure you have these set in accordingly. Now your cam caps are gonna be numbered. And when you remove cam caps, try to remove them and keep them in the order that you remove them. But if not, they do have numbers. You can go find yourself a diagram online that'll tell you what cam caps go where. Now when installing a camshaft, don't go and just tighten everything down all at once. That's a good way to warp something or to mess something up on this camshaft and you won't know until you start the vehicle and your vehicle doesn't start or you destroy the engine or something like that. You want to start from the inside and work your way out always. Go ahead and hand tighten everything at first. And then, go ahead and use your ratchet. And tighten everything in a sequence, starting from the middle, working your way out. Now the torque specific, uh, specification on these cam caps are gonna be between five to eight inch pounds. Okay, and honestly, that's not super tight at all. You don't wanna go in here and wrench down on these bolts because you will break them off inside of this cylinder head or if you tighten them too tight, you'll end up pulling the aluminum threads out of this cylinder head and then you're in trouble you got to drill and tap uh, drill a bolt out all kinds of stuff like that so you're not trying to he-man or hulk this down you just want to get it tight and you're gonna have to possibly take this camshaft out a few times in order to properly adjust your bucket lifters out. So no need to torque right now. You can get your torque wrench together when you're done. All right, so I'll be right back. I gotta go change the diaper for a kiddo real quick. All right, so now that we have our camshaft installed, in order to check the proper clearance between your cam lobe and your bucket lifter, with the valve shut, in order to know whether the valve is shut accordingly, you want to turn your camshaft so that the elbow part is sticking straight up and down, and you've got this part here on your bucket lifter. Now then, the factory specification says that there should be 14 thousandths of an inch clearance. And this is where your feeler gauge is going to come in. So you're going to find your 14,007 inch feeler gauge and you want that to fit in between your bucket lifter and your cam lobe. So as you can see, that 14,007 inch will fit in there. Now here's the catch. You don't want that to be too tight of a fit because too tight of a fit means 
that the, the valve is open and it's not closing accordingly, which means you'll lose compression, possibly have a misfire, but you also don't want it to be too loose of a fit. If it's too loose of a fit, what will happen is that bucket lifter will rattle and it'll hit this cam lobe and that's where you get that lashing clashing noise in an engine. So we know that this one is good, 14 thousandths of an inch is good. So we're going to go to our diagram here and we're going to make a check mark and we're good on that one. Let's go ahead and check the one right next to it. So the one next to it is good. 14 thousandths of an inch will fit in there just fine. Let's go ahead and move forward then. Good there. Good there. All right. So then we're just going to go down and we're going to make another check. On our paperwork. So these two are good. I'm going to turn it over. Take a feeler gauge. Good there. Good there. So make a check there. Now we're going to check our last two. Good there. Okay, so here's the interesting thing. If you notice on all of these, like for example, this one here, it needs a little bit of help to get underneath there, but it'll fit, okay? This is not going to open up your valve, trust me. So if it fits in there and it's a good snug fit, you're in good shape. But this one, this one really fits underneath there real easy, all right? As a matter of fact, I wonder if we go to 15 thousandths of an inch. I wonder if that'll even fit underneath there. Yes. So 15 thousandths of an inch will fit underneath there. Fairly easy. Let's take it up to 16 thousandths of an inch. So now we're at 14, 15, 16. We're two thousandths of an inch above specification. 16 thousandths of an inch will fit underneath there. Let's go ahead and go up to 17. That's going to be 4 thousandths of an inch difference. 4 thousandths of an inch fits. So 17 thousandths of an inch, which is 4 thousandths of an inch difference, that fits in there. I don't like that. The reason why is the specification should be 14 thousandths of an inch. It is way too easy to stick that 14 thousandths of an inch feeler gauge in there. So we're going to go to our paperwork here and we're going to make a note. We're going to put an X. We're going to check this one. Now I've got a 7.26 millimeter bucket lifter in there and we're going to make a note that 17 thousandths of an inch fits in there and that's the difference of four thousandths of an inch so what we want is 14 thousandths of an inch so what does that mean that means that we need to go let's say we got a 7.26 bucket lifter in there we want to change that bucket lifter out we want a thicker bucket lifter so we want a 7.28 or even maybe even like a 7.30 bucket lifter here's the catch i don't have a 730 bucket lifter so we're probably going to need to go to the dealership and pick 
up a 7.30 bucket lifter because I don't want to hear a bunch of valve clashing. I don't want a loose bucket lifter. A loose bucket lifter equals a closed valve for sure, but it could also mean that it's going to be noisy on this end of the engine. Clack, 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 once you start and run it, all right? A tight bucket lifter, if you have a bucket lifter that is too tight, in other words, you can't fit 14 thousandths of an inch in between here, but you can fit 10 thousandths of an inch, that means that the valve is going to be open all the way, and you're going to need to go ahead and compensate. So if you have a bucket lifter that 14 thousandths of an inch won't fit in between there, but 10 thousandths of an inch fits in between there. That means you want a bucket lifter that is four thousandths of an inch thinner than the one that you currently have in there. If you have a bucket lifter that 14 thousandths of an inch won't fit in there, but 17 thousandths of an inch will fit in there, snug, 14 thousandths of an inch fits in there extremely loose, but 17 thousandths of an inch fits in there really snug, then you want to find a bucket lifter that is four thousandths of an inch thicker. Because again, you want to find the happy medium between too tight and too loose. So that way you, uh, you've got a good running engine that doesn't make a whole bunch of noise. So there you go, folks. There's just some simple information on how to put bucket lifters back into a cylinder head, how to use a feeler gauge, and basically the way the math works in order for it to, to work out for you. So again, just to kind of recap, if you've got a bucket lifter that 14 thousandths of an inch fits in there extremely loose, but you take it up 4 thousandths of an inch to 17 thousandths of an inch, and that fits in there nice and snug, then you want this bucket lifter to change out to a bucket lifter that is a four thousandths of an inch thicker and then go ahead and stick your fourteen thousandths of an inch feeler gauge in there and see if that's a nice snug fit because this bucket lifter this lifter could make a lot of noise and be noisy now if you have one that fourteen thousandths of an inch won't fit in there so let's say you have a bucket lifter and it's no good at 14 thousandths of an inch but it does equal 10 thousandths of an inch what you're going to want to do is make this bucket lifter four thousandths of an inch thicker and again that measurement is going to be from the middle point here to here so that means you want that distance between my two fingers to be four thousandths of an inch thicker. So there you go, folks. Uh, just, just some more simple stuff. Also, if you lose order of your camshafts, you can always look at them. This one has I2. That I stands for intake. That th That's the way you can identify to know that you're working on your intake side. The exhaust camshaft will have exhaust. So I've made my note that I want to try to pick up a bucket lifter that's a little bit thicker than the one that I have in there. I don't have one here. Everything I have here is thinner. So I'm going to go ahead and take a trip to the dealership. Before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and do the exhaust side.